this next video from Bernie Sanders rally over the weekend is amazing. Um, she absolutely torches Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden. Um, and I forgot to mention this in the other segment we did, but this rally broke a record. Elizabeth Warren's record was 20,000 people at one of her rallies. Trump was a little bit above that number, I think. Bernie Sanders shattered it. He was like 26,800. Then they had to turn people away from a park. There's a lot of open area in a park. They had to turn people away because they had 26,800. And there were over 30,000 total who really wanted to, to be there. So we got a movement candidate here. People are recognizing that. It was an amazing rally, amazing endorsements. Here's one of my favorite moments. This is Nina Turner low-key laying into everybody not named Bernie Sanders in the race. There are some people who sat on the sideline when it was hard. There was only one person who stood up to the establishment, and his name is Bernard Sanders. So, oh yeah, we got a lot of copies. There's only one candidate in 2016 who told the multi-millionaires and billionaires in this country, keep your money, I'll raise my money with the people. There's only one candidate who's been marching with the working class people, not because he's running for president, but because it's right. Hello, Marriott workers. Hello, Amazon workers. Hello, Verizon workers. Hello, teachers. Come on, somebody. And I don't know about you, but I hail from a tradition that says that you will know the tree by the fruit that it bears, and Senator Bernie Sanders bears good fruit. So there are many copies. People want to talk about a framework. People who stand up in other folks' living rooms and say to them, multi-millionaires and billionaires, that nothing will fundamentally change for you. Well, Queens, I got a message. If nothing fundamentally changes for multi-millionaires and billionaires, then nothing fundamentally changes for you and you and you and you. <laughs> we finally have somebody in our lifetime who will be unflinching yes. that his only special interests are sisters and brothers in Queens. His only special interests are sisters and brothers in Denmark, South Carolina. His only special interests, hello Flint, Michigan, his only special interests are the people of this great nation. So yeah, there are many copies is only one original. I, mean, I don't know why you would take the copy, baby, when you can have the original. He didn't vote to give President, more, President Trump more money for wars. Hello, somebody. He voted against these rotten trade deals that steal wealth from our communities. God damn. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, that was so good. Oh, she was on fire. I'm officially stealing the come on, somebody. <laughs> oh, that was so good. I'm ready to run through a wall after listening to that stuff. Okay. Um... She is taking shots there, and they are brilliant. So, first she says, you know, he didn't sit on the sidelines when it got hard. That's a direct reference to Elizabeth Warren, because in 2016, Bernie Sanders famously went to Elizabeth Warren and kind of begged Elizabeth Warren to primary Hillary Clinton, because... Bernie knows Hillary Clinton's record and what she represents, and he wanted somebody further left to rep that position. So he went to Elizabeth Warren and asked, can you please do this? And she said no. So Bernie's like, all right, I got to do what I got to do. And that, that, by the way, that verifies exactly what I've been saying about Bernie for the longest time. It's not even that he wants to be president. 
He has no ego. It's not about that. He actually wants to fix the problems in the country. He wants to fix the problems. He's like, oh, God, nobody else is going to do it. I guess I got to step up. I guess I got to do it. That's Bernie Sanders. She's directly calling out Elizabeth Warren low-key there. Oh, he didn't sit on the sidelines when it got hard. Oh, Nina, I love it. Uh, then she says, we got a lot of copies running around. Oh, <laughs> we all know what that means. That's 100% you know, geared towards Elizabeth Warren. Cause yes, she's uh, Bernie light is what she's been called for the longest time because she is, she takes Bernie Sanders, his ideas, waters them down until they're more shitty. And then goes good enough. Is that good enough? No, no, it's not. I, I don't know why you'd want the copy when you could have the original baby. That's what she said. <laughs> I love it. Um, then there's only one candidate candidate who raises money from the people and tells the multimillionaires and multibillionaires to kick rocks. Again, that's low-key calling out Elizabeth Warren, high-key calling out Joe Biden, but Elizabeth Warren, she did that, you know, that trick that we've talked about on this show where she raised money for her Senate campaign and then funneled that money to her presidential campaign and the money that she raised in the Senate campaign was from big donors. Now, Bernie funneled money too, but it wasn't, he didn't raise it from big donors originally. So there's a giant difference there. So the funneling is not the problem. Nobody's really arguing with that. The funneling is, okay, the problem is the source of where you raise the money from. And by the way, she's now flipped back and forth multiple times. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to do unilateral disarmament. I'm going to raise big money in the general. And then when she got pushed back on that, she flipped. And all of a sudden it became... Oh, no, I'm not going to raise big money in the general, but I will help the party raise big money. Okay, well, then we're gonna, you're going to do the old Clinton trick, which is raise money for the party. The party funnels it back to you. That's what's going to happen. She's calling it out. She sees this. Um, and then she says one candidate who's been marching with workers. Um, and then the two most direct call outs for people who follow this stuff closely. Again, it's all low key. It's all kind of subtle. But if you follow this stuff closely, you know what she's saying. Uh, she said, we got people talking about a framework. That's a reference to a story from like two or three weeks ago where Elizabeth Warren was asked a question about Medicare for All. And she goes, no, no, no. So Medicare for All is just a framework. And like, we'll fill out the details. And no, that's not, no. It's a very specific direct bill that's laid out in great detail that explains exactly how we get this done. So if you're saying it's a framework, how committed are you really to the bill that you signed your name up for? Nails are on that. But the best one. He's not voting for President Trump's wars. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> that's exact. That's the exact line of argument that I've been screaming for Bernie to go with. Because, you know, he what he tried to do in the recent interview, I forget who it was with, but it doesn't matter, is he said she calls herself a capitalist to her bones. I'm not a capitalist to my bones. That's the argument that he went with. Now, people who are already on the left hear that and they love it. And they go, ooh, nice. I like it. Sick burn. But. I cautioned against that argument, and here's why. 65% of the country still favors capitalism. Now, when you go issue for issue, of course, the American people are significantly to the left. But labels, they don't really know labels, and don't get too married to labels. So when you go all in on that angle of it, it doesn't, it doesn't pack a punch. It doesn't hit. It doesn't pierce through. I'm a big fan of you have to use visceral arguments that go right, in, right into your mind. You know how when some people talk... You sit there and you listen, it's like you hear the Charlie Brown, and it just doesn't land. You have to decidedly do the opposite. And the way you do the opposite is you focus on direct arguments that go right to the heart. And there's no room for interpreting it any other way than this is bad. So in the case of Elizabeth Warren, what do you do? Exactly what Nina Turner just did right there. Oh, really? You're going to act like we're equally progressive? She voted for Trump's wars. Game, set, match. Game, set, match. She voted to give Trump a massive increase in his military budget. A military that he's using to do illegal and offensive wars around the world. You can't vote to give this lunatic madman an increase in a military budget and then turn around and act like, but I'm so progressive. Foreign policy is the area where the president has the most direct influence because the president is the commander in chief. There's not as many layers of bureaucracy when it comes to what you decide on foreign policy. 
you voted to give Donald Trump an increase in his military budget, you agree with Trump on his warmongering, and you're going to turn around and act like you're in the same league as this guy? Please. Please. So she absolutely destroyed uh, Elizabeth Warren there. She also went after Biden, but that was easier. That's easier, because he makes it so much easier. But Elizabeth uh, or uh, Anita Turner is really showing the way there, showing the roadmap. This is how you go after Elizabeth Warren. Now, some people went after her on Twitter, but totally ineffectual, these people who are trying to go after Nina Turner. Because the response was, and it's brilliant, yeah, but I'm stating the facts. So if you have a problem with what I'm saying, maybe your problem isn't really with me. It's with the person who did the things that I'm accurately saying they did. So you can't get mad at me. Get mad at the person who did the things. That then allowed me to call it out because they did it. They did it. The problem's not me calling out. The problem is that they did it. Boom. You can't, you can't lose this debate. You can't lose this argument. How are you going to lose that argument? How are you going to lose that argument? Another point that I like to bring up in the context of Elizabeth Warren is she said, allow me to make a spirited defense of, defense of Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin is seriously the most conservative Democrat in the Senate. If you say, let me make a spirited defense of Joe Manchin, I hope you understand what that means. That means we're not getting any of our actual left-wing legislation done. Because you're going to have to be honest that he's an enemy of the movement when you're in the White House. Because the only way you're going to get anything passed is to defeat him. Either make him fall in line and do the right thing and vote the right way, or let him know we're going to primary you and we're going to win. And I'll support your, your opponent, and I'll do rallies in West Virginia. Bernie has already committed to doing exactly that. What's Elizabeth Warren doing? <laughs> Let me make a spirited defense of this man. Well, then congratulations on getting bupkis done. You don't get anything done. So, great job there from Nina Turner. We're starting to make the distinction now, and it's, it's clear. The arguments are now officially being made, and this is a great beginning. We'll see if Bernie starts to incorporate some of this stuff moving forward. Listen, man. In a world that made sense, it would eventually come down to Warren and Bernie. And then when it's just Warren and Bernie, you're going to have to flesh out the differences. And then when that's the case, you better come correct. You better come correct. And I'll give you the list of stuff at the time, but Nina Turner is definitely on the right track, and as always, she delivers it brilliantly.